my honor to announce the arrival of Secretary of State Mark Ritchie. The hour of 12 o'clock having arrived, and in obedience to the laws of the state of Minnesota, becomes my duty as your Secretary of State to call the members of the Minnesota House of Representatives to order. I will appoint as clerk pro tem, Representative-elect Patty Fritz. I call upon Rabbi Marsha Zimmerman to offer a prayer for us all. In the words of the five books of Moses, it says, Baruch Ata Echa, Baruch Ata B'Tzetecha. Blessed are you who have gathered today for this 88th legislative session. We come from many backgrounds, many beliefs, many traditions, but we are one in working for a better Minnesota. This journey you have made to this moment has been long, from caucuses to conventions, community neighborhood gatherings, door knocking, and then voted in to the positions that you are to fulfill. You have worked hard to gain this privilege, and now the real work begins. May each of you remember that you are here for all Minnesotans. May you remember that every legislation you pass is a moral statement about the future of this state. May you know that our budget is a moral document. As you feel the support of family and friends gathered here today in these chambers, when you are presented with an ethical dilemma, may you find the inner strength to vote your conscience. And when you complete this 88th legislative session, May you have worked proud to leave the state a better place, not just for the present, but for the future. The future of our collective children, and we hear one giving us their support. For our collective grandchildren, for the future of this great state. Baruch atah Blessed are you as you begin this session, and Baruch Atah B'Tzetecha. Blessed are you when you complete this session, that you have brought us forward to a better place. Amen. Amen. Our chaplain today is Rabbi Marsha Zimmerman from Temple Israel. Please join me in our Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Today, we gather again under President Lincoln's watchful eye. 150 years ago, last week, was President Lincoln's most memorable, most far-reaching act 
his issuing of the Emancipation Proclamation, which put liberty and freedom squarely on the nation's agenda and brought attention to our own nation's devotion and desire for that freedom from around the world. 150 years ago, coming this July, Lincoln helped lead the nation, but the soldiers of this nation helped take this whole experiment in democracy forward by their victory at the Gettysburg Battle. Minnesotans were there and played a crucial role. Many of you know that story. Those were the same Minnesotans, the same soldiers, who were the first to volunteer when Lincoln asked for troops to defend the Constitution, the Union. And they were the same soldiers, the same Minnesotans, who built this magnificent building for us, first to say how proud they were and we must remain as Minnesotans and say that to the world, but to build it in a way that inside would have the reminders of the sacrifices of not just those soldiers, but all who've given to give us this opportunity. Later in this year, of course, will be the 150th anniversary of Lincoln's most famous speech, his Gettysburg Address, where he asked the question out loud, would this nation perish? Would this experiment in democracy succeed, survive? Would government of the people, by the people, and for the people be our enduring inheritance? Yes, President Lincoln. We gather here today to say out loud and in person, yes, that experiment has survived. And we gather here to remember and express our gratitude for those who made it possible for us to take on this great responsibility that we face and that we are agreeing to take on together today. Thank you to all. Please can the clerk call the roll. One A, Dan Fabian. One B, Deborah Keel. Two A, Roger A. Erickson. Two B, Steve Green. Three A, David Dill. Three B, Mary Murphy. Four A, Ben Lynn. Four B, Paul Marquardt. 5A, John Purcell. Here. 5B, Tom Anzell. Here. 6A, Carly Moline. 6B, Jason Metza. 7A, Thomas Huntley. 7B, Eric Simonson. 8A, Bud Nornis. 8B, Mary Franzen. 9A, Mark Anderson. 9B, Ron Keyshaw. 10A, John Ward. 10B, Joe Radinovich. 11A, Mike Sundin. 11B, Tim Faust. 12A, Jay McNamara. 12B, Paul Anderson. 7A, Jeff Howe. 13B, Tim O'Driscoll. 14A, vacant. 14B, Zachary Dorholt. 14A, Sandra Erickson. 15B, Jim Neubauer. 16A, Chris Swidinski. 16B, Paul Torkelson. 17A, Andrew Falk. 17B, Mary Swatsky. 18A, Dean Erdahl. 18B, Glenn Grughagen. 19A, vacant. 19B, Kathy Bernard. 20A, Kelby Woodard. 20B, David Bly. 21A, Timothy J. Kelly. 21B, Steve Drazkowski. 22A, Joe Schomacher. 22B, Rod Hamilton. 23A, Bob Gunther. 23B, Tony Cornish. 24A, John Petersburg. 24B, Patty Fritz, present. 26A, Dwayne Quam. 
25B, Kim Norton. 26A, Tina Liebling. 26B, Mike Benson. 27A, Shannon Savick. 27B, Jean Poppy. 23A, Jean Pulowski, Jr. 28B, Gregory M. Davids. 29A, Joe McDonald. 29B, Marion O'Neill. 30A, Nick Zerwaz. 30B, David Fitzsimmons. 31A, Kurt Doubt. 31B, Tom Hackbarth. 32A, Brian Johnson. 32B, Bob Barrett. 33A, Jerry Hurtos. 33B, Cindy Pugh. 34A, Joyce Pepin. 34B, Kurt Zellers. 35A, Jim Abler. 35B, Peggy Scott. 36A, Mark Ullum. 36B, Melissa Hortman. 37A, Jerry Newton. 37B, Tim Sanders. 38A, Linda Runbeck. 38B, Matt Dean. 39A, Bob Detmer. 39B, Kathy Lomer. 40A, Michael Nelson. 40B, Deborah Hillstrom. 41A, Connie Bernardi. 41B, Carolyn Lane. 42A, Barbie Russo. 42B, Jason Ike Isaacson. 43A, Peter Fisher. 43B, Leon Lilly. 44A, Sarah Anderson. 44B, John Benson. 45A, Lyndon Carlson. 45B, Mike Freiberg. 46A, Ryan Winkler. 46B, Steve Simon. 47A, Ernie Leidegger. 47B, Joe Hoppy. 48A, Yvonne Seltzer. 48B, Jennifer Loon. 49A, Ron Earhart. 49B, Paul Rosenthal. 50A, Linda Slocum. 50B, Ann Lincheski. 51A, Sandra Mason. 51B, Lori Halverson. 52A, Rick Hansen. 52B, Joe Atkins. 53A, Joanne Ward. 53B, Andrea Kiefer. 54A, Dan Schoen. 54B, Denny McNamara. 55A, Mike Beard. 55B, Tony Albright. 56A, Pam Myra. 56B, Will Morgan. 57A, Tara Mack. 57B, Ann Wills. 58A, Mary Liz Holberg. 58B, Pat Garofalo. 59A, Joe Mullery. 59B, Raymond Dean. 60A, Diane Loeffler. 60B, Phyllis Kahn. 61A, Frank Hornstein. 61B, Paul Thiessen. 62A, Karen Clark. 62B, Susan Allen. 63A, Jim Dabney. 63B, Jean Wagenius. 64A, Aaron Murphy. 64B, Michael Paymar. 65A, Rena Moran. 65B, Carlos Mariani. 66A, Alice Hausman. 66B, John Lesh. 67A, Tim Mahoney. 67B, Sheldon Johnson. There being 132 certificate of elections on file, I call on the Honorable Judge Thomas Pugh, District Court Judge, Dakota County, to swear in our new members. Judge Pugh, please come and administer the oath. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be back, and I'm honored to return to this spot today to uh, be a part of this special occasion. 
I'd ask at this point for all elected representatives to please rise. If you could raise your right hands. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Minnesota, and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of the office to which you have just been elected to the best of your ability, so help you God. Congratulations. Congratulations. Will the clerk please take the roll to determine if we have a full quorum? Quorum is present. We will proceed to the election of speaker. Nominations are now in order. I recognize Res Representative Slocum from District 50A for the purpose of a nomination. Honorable Secretary of State, Richie. Madam Speaker Pro Tem Fritz, members, I rise to place the name of Representative Paul Thiessen before you as Speaker of the House. I am so honored to do this. Paul Thiessen embodies the seasoned integrity to be an exceptional Speaker. His dedication to service within the House of Representatives and the State of Minnesota is well proven. He holds all of us, Democrats, Republicans, to the highest of standards. Paul Thiessen will work tirelessly in every community, town, and city in Minnesota to make sure all Minnesotans get a fair opportunity for success. Paul Thiessen's vision for Minnesota is one that's inclusive, giving every voice a place to be heard and respected as he works to make Minnesota's government and economy the best it can be for all Minnesotans. Paul has served as a mentor to me. He's inspired me here at the House, but more so, he's a good and true friend. Please join me in supporting Paul Thiessen as our next speaker. Thank you. Are there any seconds to the nomination? I recognize the Representative John Ward from District 10A. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Members and guests, I rise in support of Senator, uh, Representative Paul Thiessen's nomination as the next Speaker of the House. Let me tell you why, members and guests. Representative Thiessen is a person who has demonstrated outstanding integrity, honesty, and trust as a legislator. He is a person of high standards, morals, and principles. Representative Thiessen is a strong family man. His work ethic, dedication, and commitment is exemplary. Representative Thiessen has the vision needed to move our great state forward. Representative Thiessen's vision includes having a state government and a state economy that works for all corners and all citizens in the state of Minnesota. He is fair, inclusive, and respectful in all of his decisions. He is considered an effective, and positive leader by most all of our colleagues. Representative Thiessen is a very effective communicator, and more importantly, my friends, 
He is one that listens to all sides. Finally, as my short friend and former colleague from the range would say, the most important characteristic about Representative Thiessen is that he was made in America and Minnesota. <laughs> Members, I hope you will join me and all of us in voting for Representative Paul Thiessen. Therefore, it is my honor and pleasure to second the nomination of Representative Paul Thiessen as the next Speaker of the House from the great state of Minnesota. Thank you. I recognize Representative Mack from District 57A for the purpose of nomination. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Members and guests, I stand before you today to nominate Representative Kurt Doubt from District 31A for Speaker of the House. Kurt possesses all of the qualities necessary to be a good speaker. He's open-minded, respectful, understanding, a good leader, and knows when to stand his ground and when he needs to compromise. Kurt, although elected just two years ago, brings a tremendous amount of experience to this body as a township officer, a county commissioner, as well as a great deal of experience from the private sector. Kurt has the ability to bring people together, to do what is necessary to make Minnesota a better place to work, live, grow jobs, and raise a family. He is not afraid to ask for help when needed, and he knows that talking to people and listening to people is the best way to make decisions for the people of Minnesota. He will work tirelessly to make sure Minnesota is the best place for families to grow and prosper, for businesses to be able to hire jobs and create jobs, recognizing that you cannot have one without the other. Members, I'm honored to, rep or to stand here, nominate Kurt Doubt, and I ask for your support. Are there any seconds to the nomination? I recognize Representative Woodard from District 20A. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Secretary Ritchie, Madam President Fritz, and members. It is my distinct pleasure to second the nomination of Kurt Doubt to serve as our Speaker of the Minnesota House. Having served with Representative Doubt over the past two years, he has proven time and again that he is the kind of young leader that we need at this critical juncture of our state's history. His leadership skills are clearly evident as he has demonstrated a bipartisan approach that will ensure a fair hearing for all of our diverse and at times, of course, passionate views. His ability to convey mutual respect and a spirit of compromise that strives to find points of shared values is exactly what Minnesota and this body needs to solve the problems and leverage the countless opportunities that will present themselves in the coming session. I ask that you join me in supporting Kurt Doubt as our next speaker of the Minnesota House of Representatives. Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Seeing not, I declare the nominations closed and we'll proceed to a vote. Will the clerk please call the roll on the election of the speaker? Abler. No. Abler votes doubt. Albright. No. Albright votes doubt. Allen. Allen votes Thiessen. Anderson M. No. Anderson M votes doubt. Anderson P. Anderson P votes doubt. Anderson S. Anderson S. votes doubt. Anzel. Anzel votes Thiessen. Atkins. Atkins votes Thiessen. Barrett. Barrett votes doubt. Beard. Beard votes doubt. Benson J. Benson J. votes Thiessen. Benson M. Benson M. votes doubt. Bernardi. Bernardi votes Thiessen. Bly. Bly votes Thiessen. Breinart. Breinart votes Thiessen. Carlson. Carlson votes Thiessen. Clark. Clark votes Thiessen. Cornish. Cornish votes doubt. Doubt. Doubt votes doubt. Davids. Davids votes doubt. Dabney. Dabney votes Thiessen. Dean M. 
Dean M. votes Doubt. Dean R. Dean R. votes Thiessen. Detmer. Detmer votes Doubt. Dill. Dill votes Thiessen. Dorholt. Dorholt votes Thiessen. Draskowski. Draskowski votes Doubt. Earhart. Earhart votes Thiessen. Erickson R. Erickson R. votes Thiessen. Erickson S. Erickson S. votes Doubt. Fabian. Fabian votes Doubt. Falk. Falk votes Thiessen. Faust. Faust votes Thiessen. Fisher. Fisher votes Thiessen. Fitzsimmons. Fitzsimmons votes Doubt. Franzen. Franzen votes Doubt. Freeburg. Freeburg votes Thiessen. Fritz. Thiessen. Fritz votes Thiessen. Garofalo. Garofalo votes Doubt. Green. Green votes Doubt. Grunhagen. Grunhagen votes Doubt. Gunther. Gunther votes Doubt. Hackbarth. Hackbarth votes Doubt. Halverson. Halverson votes Thiessen. Hamilton. Hamilton votes Doubt. Hansen. Hansen votes Thiessen. Hausman. Hausman votes Thiessen. Hurtos. Hurtos votes Doubt. Hillstrom. Hillstrom votes Thiessen. Holberg. Holberg votes Doubt. Hoppy. Hoppy votes Doubt. Hornstein. Hornstein votes Thiessen. Hortman. Hortman votes Thiessen. Howe. Howe votes Doubt. Huntley. Huntley votes Thiessen. Isaacson. Isaacson votes Thiessen. Johnson B. Johnson B. votes Doubt. Johnson S. Johnson S. votes Thiessen. Kahn. Kahn votes Thiessen. Kelly. Kelly votes Doubt. Kiefer. Kiefer votes Doubt. Keel. Keel votes Doubt. Creshaw. Creshaw votes Doubt. Lane. Lane votes Thiessen. Leidiger. Leidiger votes Doubt. Lincheski. Lincheski votes Thiessen. Lesh. Lesh votes Thiessen. Liebling. Liebling votes Thiessen. Leon. Leon votes Thiessen. Lily. Lily votes Thiessen. Loeffler. Loeffler votes Thiessen. Lomer. Lomer votes Doubt. Loon. Loon votes Doubt. Mac. Mac votes Doubt. Mahoney. Mahoney votes Thiessen. Mariani. Mariani votes Thiessen. Marquardt. Marquardt votes Thiessen. Mason. Mason votes Thiessen. McDonald. McDonald votes Doubt. McNamara. McNamara votes Thiessen. McNara. McNamara votes Doubt. Maline. Maline votes Thiessen. Metza. Metza votes Thiessen. Moran. Moran votes Thiessen. Morgan. Morgan votes Thiessen. Mullery. Mullery votes Thiessen. Murphy E. Murphy E. votes Thiessen. Murphy M. Murphy M. votes Thiessen. Myra. Myra votes Doubt. Nelson. Nelson votes Thiessen. Newberger. Newberger votes Doubt. Newton. Newton votes Thiessen. Nornis. Nornis votes Doubt. Norton. Norton votes Thiessen. O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll votes Doubt. O'Neill. O'Neill votes Doubt. Paymar. Paymar votes Thiessen. Pulowski. Pulowski votes Thiessen. Pepin. Pepin votes Doubt. Purcell. Purcell votes Thiessen. Petersburg. Petersburg votes Doubt. Poppy. Poppy votes Thiessen. Pew. Pew votes Doubt. Quam. Quam votes Doubt. Radinovich. Radinovich votes Thiessen. Rosenthal. Rosenthal votes Thiessen. Runbeck. Runbeck votes Doubt. Sanders. Sanders votes Doubt. Savick. Savick votes Thiessen. Swatsky. Swatsky votes Thiessen. Schoen. Schoen votes Thiessen. Schumacher. Schumacher votes Doubt. Scott. Scott votes Doubt. Seltzer. Seltzer votes Thiessen. Simon. Simon votes Thiessen. Simonson. 
Simonson votes Thiessen. Slocum. Slocum votes Thiessen. Sundin. Sundin votes Thiessen. Swadinsky. Swadinsky votes Doubt. Thiessen. Thiessen votes Thiessen. Torkelson. Torkelson votes Doubt. Allum. Allum Doubt. Erdahl. Erdahl votes Doubt. Wagenius. Wagenius votes Thiessen. Ward, J.A. Ward, J.A. votes Thiessen. Ward, J.E. Ward, J.E. votes Thiessen. Willis. Willis votes Doubt. Winkler. Winkler votes Thiessen. Woodard. Woodard votes Doubt. Yeruso. Yeruso votes Thiessen. Zellers. Zellers votes Doubt. Zerwaz. Zerwaz votes Doubt. The results of the roll call are as follows. For Representative Thiessen, 72 votes. For Representative Doubt, 60 votes. I thereby declare Representative Paul Thiessen as the next speaker. I would like to appoint this committee to escort the speaker-elect to the podium, Representative Hansen, Representative Murphy, M, Representative Radonovitz, Representative Franson and Representative Kiefer, please escort the speaker-elect to the rostrum. Congratulations, and I would like to call on Associate Justice Wilhelmina Wright, our newest Justice of the Minnesota Supreme Court, to administer the oath of office. Thank you, Secretary Ritchie. Speaker Thiessen, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Minnesota, and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of the officer, Office of the Speaker of the House of Representatives to which you have been elected to the best of your ability? So help you God. I do. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Speaker, I've had the honor and privilege of presenting this gavel soon to three young, dynamic leaders that make me very hopeful about our entire state's future. It gives me great honor to present you the gavel. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, uh, 
Thank you to the body uh, for, this, for this great privilege. Um, and thank you to all the members here uh, who knew and returning uh, who are doing such a great public service to our state. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a big responsibility and a joint responsibility for all of us uh, to govern the state of Minnesota uh, together. And we all come here with different ideas about how that should be accomplished. Uh, but one thing that I always tell people when they talk about everything that goes on at the legislature is every person in this room who comes to serve here is here for the right reasons, which is having the best interest of Minnesota at, at heart. And I know that that's true for all of us, uh, and I hope that we remember that as we move through the next several months uh, and couple of years. Um, I want to thank Representative Doubt uh, uh, for working the way you've worked uh, so far, and I look forward to working with you uh, into the future. Uh, the things that were said um, in your nomination, I, I think, are, are absolutely true. Uh, and I look forward to working together. Uh, and I want to thank Representative Zellers as well for his great service uh, to this state and, um, and the dedication and sacrifices uh, I know that, that you have made uh, for the good of this state. So thank you for that. I also want to thank all the family members uh, and friends who are joining us today uh, and those who aren't here uh, but who help and support every, every person. Uh, serving as a member of the State House of Representatives isn't a job that you can do alone. Uh, I know getting here is not a job that you can do alone, but serving here is true as well. And, and so thank you uh, for your, your willingness to, to put, up with this, uh, put up with this sometime. I specifically want, I especially want to thank my wife Karen uh, who is here and my kids. Uh, Emily and Griffin, with his phone there, I see, uh, and Evan, uh, uh, you mean the world to me. My mom uh, is also here joining us. My dad, unfortunately, couldn't make it today, but I know he's watching somewhere. Uh, and my sister, Sue, is here with, his, with my nephew. So thank you for being here. So, you know, as each of you do, you know, I really have high hopes for this legislative session. Uh, but above all, I hope that we all remember each day that we're custodians uh, and trustees of the seats that we sit in and the office that we serve in uh, and of this institution, which is really the people's house. Uh, there were folks, and I hope that we always remember, who have been here long before us uh, and who have left a great legacy uh, for us to carry on. And there's going to be people long after us who serve in these seats, hopefully to carry on our legacy to the next generation. And I think that it's really important that we remember that uh, as we come to serve here every day. And I hope, at the end of the day, I hope we do a lot of really good things for Minnesota. But at the end of the day, I hope one of the things, or maybe the main thing this legislature is remembered for, uh, can be summed up in a couple of words, and that is that they governed well. Because uh, that's what the people of Minnesota sent us here to do. Uh, we owe that to ourselves. Uh, we owe that to our constituents. Uh, and now I look forward to getting to work. Uh, so thank you, everybody. Uh, and I, I look forward to, uh, to doing some good things for the state of Minnesota. Thanks. All right, on to the next order of business. Uh, the next order of business is the election of a chief clerk. And I, rep uh, I recognize Representative Yeruso from District 42A for the purpose of a nomination. Mr. Speaker and members of the House, I am honored to nominate Albin Mathewitz for the office of chief clerk of the Minnesota House of Representatives. Mr. Mathewitz has been with the House since 1971 starting as an administrative assistant and also serving as a journal clerk, second assistant chief clerk, first assistant chief clerk, and finally chief clerk since 2005. He has also served his profession by serving the American Society of Legislative Clerks and Secretaries, both as an associate vice president and as a member of their executive committee. He served the youth of Minnesota uh, as a member of the board of directors for the YMCA Youth and Government Program from 2006 to 2012. He was born and raised in Morgan, Minnesota, 
He now lives in Moundsview, and so I'm going to be proud to say that I always have a constituent on the floor for the sessions of the House. Thank you very much. I recognize uh, Representative Kurt Zellers from District 34B to second the nomination. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, I rise to second the nomination uh, of our Chief Kirk. Uh, Al has been not only a tremendous asset uh, to those of us who've been here, uh, those of us who are new are really, really going to enjoy Al's knowledge of not only procedure rules, but also the institution of this great body. Uh, Representative Yoruso actually uh, pointed to probably to the thing that is most uh, beneficial to our great state, but also the most heartwarming part of, rep or excuse me, of the Chief Clerk's reputation here at the Capitol, bringing youth to government. Many, many days on the House floor there will be youth groups down here from very small grade school children all the way up to your high school age learning about government, state government. Uh, it's a legacy that we all can be very proud of. Uh, Al is not only a great institution to us here in Minnesota, but also the best chief clerk in the Capitol. We won't talk about the lower body, but he's the best chief clerk in all the Capitol. It's my proud and honor to second the nomination. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, I declare that nominations are closed. The clerk pro tem will call the roll for the election of the chief clerk. Abler, Abler Mathewitz, Albright, Albright Mathewitz, Allen, Allen Mathewitz, Anderson M, Anderson M Mathewitz, Anderson P, Anderson P Mathewitz, Anderson S, Anderson S Mathewitz, Anzel. At Anzel Mathewitz Atkins, Atkins Mathewitz Barrett, Barrett Mathewitz Beard, Beard Mathewitz Benson J, Benson J Mathewitz Benson M, Benson M Mathewitz Bernardi, Bernardi Mathewitz Bly, Bly Mathewitz Brynart, Brynart Mathewitz Carlson, Carlson Mathewitz Clark. Clark Mathewitz, Cornish, Cornish Mathewitz, Doubt, Doubt Mathewitz, Davids, Davids Mathewitz, Dabney, Dabney Mathewitz, Dean M, Math Dean M Mathewitz, Dean R, Dean R Mathewitz, Detmer, Detmer Mathewitz, Dill, Dill Mathewitz, Dorhalt, Dorhalt Mathewitz, Daskrowski. Draskowski Mathewitz, Earhart, Earhart Mathewitz, Erickson R, Erickson R Mathewitz, Erickson S, Erickson S Mathewitz, Fabian, Fabian Mathewitz, Falk, Falk Mathewitz, Faults, Faust Mathewitz, Fisher, Fisher Mathewitz, Fitzsimmons, Fitzsimmons Mathewitz, Franzen, Franzen Mathewitz, Freeburg, Freeburg Mathewitz, Fritz Mathewitz, Garofalo, Garofalo Mathewitz, Green, Green Mathewitz, Grunhagen, Grunhagen Mathewitz, Gunther, Gunther Mathewitz, Hackbarth, Hackbarth Mathewitz, Halverson, Halverson Mathewitz, Hal Hamilton, Hamilton Mathewitz, Hansen, Hansen Mathewitz, Hausman, Hausman Mathewitz, Hurtos, Hurtos Mathewitz, Hillstrom, Hillstrom Mathewitz, Holberg, Holberg Mathewitz, Hoppy, Hoppy Mathewitz, Hornstein, Hornstein Mathewitz, Hortman, Hortman Mathewitz, Howe, Howe Mathewitz, Huntley, Huntley Mathewitz, Isaacson, Isaacson Mathewitz, Johnson B, Johnson B Mathewitz, Johnson S. Johnson S. Mathewitz, Kahn, Kahn Mathewitz, Kelly, Kelly Mathewitz, Kiefer, Kiefer Mathewitz, Keel, Keel Mathewitz, Creshaw, Creshaw Mathewitz, Lane, Lane Mathewitz, Leidiger, Leidiger Mathewitz, Lencheski, Lencheski Mathewitz, Lesh, Lesh Mathewitz, Liebling, Liebling Mathewitz, Leon, Leon Mathewitz, Lily, Lily Mathewitz, Loeffler, 
Loeffler Mathewitz Lomer, Lomer Mathewitz Loon, Loon Mathewitz Mack, Mack Mathewitz Mahoney, Mahoney Mathewitz Mariani, Mariani Mathewitz Marquart, Marquart Mathewitz Mason, Mason Mathewitz McDonald, McDonald Mathewitz McNair, Mathewitz McNamoney, Mathewitz Meline, Meline Mathewitz Metza, Metza Mathewitz Moran, Moran Mathewitz Morgan, Morgan Mathewitz Mullery, Mullery Mathewitz Murphy E, Murphy E. Mathewitz, Murphy M. Murphy M. Mathewitz, Myra. Myra Mathewitz, Nelson. Nelson Mathewitz, Newberger. Newberger Mathewitz, Newton. Newton Mathewitz, Nornis. Northis, Norton Mathewitz, Norton. Norton Mathewitz, O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll Mathewitz, O'Neill. O'Neill Mathewitz, Paymar. Paymar Mathewitz, Pulowski, Pulowski Mathewitz, Pepin, Pepin Mathewitz, Purcell, Purcell Mathewitz, Petersburg, Petersburg Mathewitz, Poppy, Poppy Mathewitz, Pew, Pew Mathewitz, Quam, Quam Mathewitz, Radinovich, Radinovich Mathewitz, Rosenthal, Rosenthal Mathewitz, Runbeck, Runbeck Mathewitz Sanders, Sanders Mathewitz Savick, Savick Mathewitz Swatsky, Swatsky Mathewitz Schoen, Schoen Mathewitz Schumacher, Schumacher Mathewitz Scott, Scott Mathewitz Seltzer, Seltzer Mathewitz Simon, Simon Mathewitz Simonson, Simonson Mathewitz Slocum, Sloka Mathewitz Sundin, Sundin Mathewitz Swadinsky, Swadinsky Mathewitz Torkelson, Torkelson Mathewitz Ullum, Ullum Mathewitz Erdahl, Erdahl Mathewitz Wiginius, Wiginius Mathewitz J. A. Ward, J. A. Ward Mathewitz G. E. Ward, G. E. Ward Mathewitz Willis, Willis Mathewitz Winkler, Winkler Mathewitz Woodard, Woodard Mathewitz Yeruso, Yeruso Mathewitz Zellers, Zellers Mathewitz Zewas, Zewas Mathewitz, Speaker Thiessen, Speaker Thiessen Mathewitz. There being 132 ayes and zero nays, Elban A. Mathewitz has been elected chief clerk. Uh, so will the chief clerk please come forward and take the oath of office. Sorry about that. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Minnesota and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of the office to which you have just been elected to the best of your ability? So help you God. All right. Congratulations. Representative Murphy E. offers the following resolution on election of other officers. The chief clerk will read the resolution. Murphy E. offers the following resolution and moves its adoption. 
resolve that the election of the other officers be made on one roll call unless there should be more than one nomination for any one office. I recognize the member from Ramsey County, uh, the Majority Leader Murphy, to explain the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, members, this is a, re a resolution to allow the election of our other officers with one vote. As it did two years ago, it will save our voices, and I ask for your vote. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. The resolution is adopted. I recognize Representative Purcell from District 5A, who will make a series of nominations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm uh, nominating for several offices here for the first assistant chief clerk, Patrick D. Murphy, second assistant chief clerk, Gail C. Romanowski, first assistant sergeant at arms, Amanda M. Rudolph, and for index clerk, Carl T. Hamry. Thank you. Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Seeing none, I declare the nominations closed. The chief clerk will call the oh. the chief clerk uh, will call the roll on the election of the other officers, and you may vote by uh, stating slate if you wish. Abler, Abler Slate, Albright, Albright Slate, Ellen. Ellen Slade, Anderson M. Anderson N. M. Slade, Anderson P. Anderson P. Slade, Anderson S. Anderson S. Slade, Anzel. Anzel Slade, Atkins. Atkins Slade, Barrett. Barrett Slade, Beard. Beard Slade, Benson J. Benson J. Slade, Benson M. Benson M. Slate, Bernardi. Bernardi Slate, Bly. Bly Slate, Breinart. Breinart Slate, Carlson. Carlson Slate, Clark. Clark Slate, Cornish. Cornish Slate, Doubt. Doubt Slate, Davids. David Slate, Davney. Davney Slate, Dean M. Dean M. Slate, Dean R. Dean R. Slate, Detmer, Detmer Slate, Dill, Dill Slate, Dorholt, Dorholt Slate, Draskowski, Draskowski Slate, Earhart, Earhart Slate, Erickson R. Erickson R. Slate, Erickson S. Erickson S. Slate, Fabian. Fabian Slate, Falk, Falk Slate, Faust, Faust, Faust Slate, Fisher, Fisher Slate, Fitzsimmons, Fitzsimmons Slate, Franson, Franson Slate, Freiburg, Freiburg Slate, Fritz, Fritz Slate, Garofalo, Garofalo Slate, Green, Green Slate, Grunhagen. Grunhagen Slate, Gunther. Gunther Slate, Hackbarth. Hackbarth Slate, Halverson. Halverson Slate, Hamilton. Hamilton Slate, Hansen. Hansen Slate, Hausman. Hausman Slate, Hurtos. Hurtos Slate, Hillstrom. Hillstrom Slade, Holberg, Holberg Slade, Hoppy, Hoppy Slade, Hornstein, Hornstein Slade, Hortman, Hortman Slade, Howell, Howell Slade, Huntley, Huntley Slade, Isaacson, Isaacson Slade, Johnson B, Johnson B Slade, Johnson S, Johnson S Slade, Kahn, Con Slate, Kelly, Kelly Slate, Kiefer, 
Kiefer, Slade. Kiel. Kiel, Slade. Krisha. Krisha, Slade. Lane. Lane, Slade. Leidiger. Leidiger, Slade. Lencheski. Lencheski, Slade. Lesh. Lesh, Slade. Liebling. Liebling, Slade. Lean. Lean, Slade. Lily. Lily, Slate, Loffler, Loffler, Slate, Lomer, Lomer, Slate, Loon, Loon, Slate, Mac, Mac, Slate, Mahoney, Mahoney, Slate, Mariani, Mariani, Slate, Marquardt, Marquardt, Slate, Mason, Mason, Slate, McDonald, McDonald, Slate, McNamer, McNamer Slate, McNamara, McNamara Slate, Moline, Moline Slate, Metza, Metza Slate, Moran, Moran, Moran Slate, Morgan, Morgan Slate, Mallory, Mallory Slate, Murphy E, Murphy E Slate, Murphy M, Murphy M Slate, Myra. Myra Slate, Nelson, Nelson Slate, Newberger, Newberger Slate, Newton, Newton Slate, Norness, Norness Slate, Norton, Norton Slate, O'Driscoll, O'Driscoll Slate, O'Neill, O'Neill Slate, Paymar, Paymar Slate, Pulowski, Pulowski Slate, Pepin. Pepin Slate, Purcell, Purcell Slate, Petersburg, Petersburg Slate, Poppy, Poppy Slate, Pew, Pew, Pew Slate, Quam, Quam Slate, Radinovich, Radinovich Slate, Rosenthal, Rosenthal Slate, Runbeck, Runbeck Slate, Sanders. Sanders Slate, Savick, Savick Slate, Swatsky, Swatsky Slate, Schoen, Schoen Slate, Schumacher, Schumacher Slate, Scott, Scott Slate, Seltzer, Seltzer Slate, Simon, Simon Slate, uh, Simonson, Simonson Slate, Slocum, Slocum Slate, Sunday, Sundan, Sundan Slate, Swazinski, Swazinski Slate, Torkelson, Torkelson Slate, Uglem, Uglem Slate, Erdahl, Erdahl Slate, Wagenius, Wagenius Slate, War J A, War J A Slate, War J E, War J E Slate, Wills, Wills Slate, Winkler. Winkler, Slate, Woodard, Woodard, Slate, Yeruso, Yeruso, Slate, Zellers, Zellers, Slate, Zerwas, Zerwas, Slate, Speaker Teeson, Speaker Teeson, Slate. A majority of the members having elected uh, and voted for the Slate, I therefore declare, uh, declare those nominated have been duly elected. We Will you please come forward and take the oath of office? Please raise your right hands. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Minnesota, and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of the office to which you have just been elected to the best of your ability, so help you God? All right, congratulations.
Representative Murphy E. Uh, offers the following resolution relating to the temporary rules. The Chief Clerk will report the resolution. Murphy E. offers the following resolution and moves its adoption. Be it resolved that the temporary rules of the House for this session, the 88th regular session, shall be the same as the permanent rules of the House for the last session, the 87th regular session, as they existed on Wednesday, May 9, 2012, with the following exceptions. Okay. There are copies of the resolution on each of your desk, members. Uh, I recognize the member from Ramsey County, Representative Murphy E., to explain the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Members, I move adoption of the temporary rules as they existed at the, at the end of last session with the exception of the 2013-14 committee names, and I ask for your vote. Is there any discussion? There is a, an amendment to the rules, a motion to amend the rules uh, at the desk. Uh, the chief clerk will report the amendment. Hamilton and others moving to amend House uh, Resolution 13-865 as follows. Uh, Representative Hamilton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And to the amendment, um, members, what this would do is this would transfer uh, the Ag Finance portion out of the Environment and Natural Resources Committee and into the Ag Policy Committee, uh, basically like it was the last two years. And to the amendment, Mr. Speaker, agriculture is a noble, a noble profession, a noble endeavor, and now is not the time to be diminishing agriculture in any way, shape, or form. The late Bob Christensen would say to me that food production is a noble enterprise. It was a powerful statement coming from a farmer who produces food and directly and indirectly created wealth and jobs, not only for himself, but for thousands and thousands of people. Everybody, and I mean everybody, depends on agriculture. There's not a person, not a business, not a government who can survive without the American farmer, without agriculture. The brave men and women who defend our country, they need nourishment. The wonderful people who educate our children, they need nourishment. The caring people who tend to the sick, they cannot do the great work that they do without nourishment for their bodies. During the recession, agriculture. During these difficult times, it was agriculture. That was the one shining star, the one bright spot in our economy. One in five jobs here in Minnesota are ag-related, and never has there been more opportunity in agriculture as there is today. I had a wonderful opportunity to go to the University of Minnesota and speak to the animal science class. There's about 400 students. And I looked around the room and I asked them what they were interested in professionally. And there was some people there that were interested in research, some veterinarians, some marketing, and then I asked, how many people are interested in production ag? And there was a handful of students up on the top left corner, about 20 kids. And I said, you should be extremely proud of who you are and what you do. Because the rest of the students in this room, they would not have an opportunity if it wasn't for you. They should be proud of who they are and what they do. Production agriculture, again, be proud of it. It's a noble profession. Mr. Speaker, you stated, you know, we're here to stand up for what we believe in, right? And like I said before, now is not the time to diminish the role of agriculture. And this is the basis of my amendment. You know, people are getting so far away from the farm. They don't understand where food production comes from. They don't understand where their food comes from. And never in the history of mankind has it been so difficult to try to feed people. Why? Because it's so easy for people to demonize agriculture, demonize the hardworking men and women that produce the food for each and every one of us. You know, unfortunately, there's many times where the media will show contempt towards agriculture as well. And that's a shame. We should not be demonizing agriculture in any way, shape, or form. Technological farming is sustainable. It was Bill Gates that said, when farmers increase their productivity, their productivity, nutrition is improved, and hunger and poverty are reduced. 
Highly productive food production can help end world hunger, lower food costs, and safeguard our natural resources. Case in point, you go back to a study that was done, and they compared from 2007 to 1977 a pound of beef to produce a pound of beef. 14% less water use, 34% less land, 20% less manure generated, and 18% less carbon footprint. Let's do dairy, producing a gallon of milk. Let's go back to 1944. 65% less water use, 90% less land, 76% less manure, and 63% reduction in carbon footprint. Same in pork, 78% less land, 41% less water, 35% reduction in carbon footprint. You take a look at environmental practices that we have done. Southwest Minnesota, go back 10 years, 153,259 tons of soil loss reduction, 59,378 tons of sediment reduction. 241,000 tons of phosphorus reduction, Mr. Speaker. Farmers are environmentally sound. We do care about the environment. And like I said in closing, now is not the time to diminish the role of agriculture. And rural members, this is your one shot. And I know I spoke to my friends on the other side of the aisle as well. And I know I have support on this. And I'm not going to call you out by name. I won't do it. However, I do encourage you to stand up and support me on this. I know some of you said that you're concerned about going against your leadership. Take it from me. 2008, I went against my party. I went against the governor. I broke from us, from our party, and I voted to override the governor's veto. Why did I do that? Because I was representing my constituents, the very people that sent me up here to support them. So I encourage you to join with me and support this. I'm Rod Hamilton. I'm a pork producer, and I'm extremely proud of it. Mr. Speaker, I anxiously await the questions, and I will yield. Thank you. Oh, and I do ask for a roll call. Thank you. A roll call has been requested. Seeing 15 hands, a roll call will be granted. Uh, the representative from Ramsey County, uh, Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Representative Rod Hamilton, thank you for your thoughtful presentation and for the good conversation that we had about this issue before, before this morning. I'm uh, grateful for the thoughtfulness um, of your presentation and grateful for our conversation together, and I hope it's a sign of good things to come for our work together for the state of Minnesota. And for our guests today, I think it's important to know that usually we have these discussions in the Rules Committee and not on the floor, and so that's why I'm going to make the following motion. Uh, I move that we re-refer this motion to the Rules Committee for its proper discussion and disposition. And I ask for your vote. Thank you. Mr. Speaker. Representative Doubt. Point of parliamentary inquiry. Uh, state your point of parliamentary inquiry. At this point in the agenda, we don't have a Rules Committee. I'd just like a clarification on that. We have not established a Rules Committee, so we don't have a committee to send this to. Um, we do have the permanent rules of the past, uh, and custom and usage has said that we've um, used that rules committee, the rules committee in the past. So there, there, there is a rules committee are, uh, currently established uh, in our rules. Representative Poppy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, I appreciate uh, Representative Hamilton's passion. And I appreciate his, um, as uh, Representative Murphy, Murphy talked about, his, his um, concern about um, what is important to all of us, agriculture. And I, I just want to speak to this issue a little bit. Um, for one thing, this is not, um, I, and I have spoken with uh, Speaker Thiessen uh, numerous times about um, agriculture, about uh, the, the policy committee, about the finance committee, and about how we're going to uh, actually be able to move forward with this. And there's one thing that I, that I really um, believe strongly in, and that is that it's, it's each of our role to represent the area we represent, but also to help to educate all of us 
about the area we represent. And it's my responsibility to advocate on behalf of the people I represent, the companies, the businesses, the farmers, all of those people. And I think that it's important for us to keep in mind that rather than diminishing the value of agriculture, we're actually enlightening others. We're advocating on behalf of agriculture. And this is an opportunity for us. And I'll tell you that um, I've served on agriculture committee for a number of years now. And for the most part, the people that serve on agriculture are Aggies. We're people that grew up on farms, that we are producers, we're um, consumers, we're people that know and understand agriculture. We're maybe learning a little bit more about agriculture, but we've grown up with an understanding and an appreciation for that. We don't often open the doors and have a lot of people that choose to come to Agriculture Committee to learn more about agriculture and the work that gets done in greater Minnesota. I think that we are going to have an opportunity not to demonize agriculture, but to enlighten and to advocate on behalf of agriculture. That is my intention, and I will do that for the entire time that I serve the legislature, in the legislature, because it's important to me to represent my roots and my current district. That's what I'd like to see us continue to do, and I think that this is going to be an opportunity to advocate on behalf of agriculture, and I will um, concur with Representative Murphy and ask that we refer this matter to the Rules Committee. Thank you. Further discussion, Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Um, I, first of all, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to request a roll call vote on the motion to re-refer. A roll call has been requested. Seeing 15 hands, there will be a roll call. Representative Doubt. And I'd like to speak to the motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Um, this is an important uh, motion, and I appreciate the Majority Leader's uh, willingness to discuss this in the Rules Committee. Um, and I'm going to hold you to your word. If this goes to the Rules Committee, we're going to have this discussion and an open discussion, um, and, and I'm going to hold you to that. Uh, but I want to also point out to the members, this is your opportunity. If you vote against this motion, it, the history of this body, and I'm not going to question anybody's motives because I know that's against our rules, but the history of this body has been that we've sent motions away uh, or, or things away to be re-referred that have never been revisited. And this is a very common practice uh, that we don't ever see these things. It's a way to hide them away. And Representative Murphy, I don't know if you remember, but two years ago you guys offered an amendment to the rules. Uh, so this is something that happens on opening day. And, and yes, I know this is a ceremonious day and I don't want to spoil that. But as Rod Hamilton mentioned, this is a very important issue and it's something that's very important to rural Minnesota. So I'll appeal to the members of this body. This isn't a partisan issue. This isn't something that breaks us up on Republican versus Democrat. This is an issue to stand up for rural Minnesota and to make sure that your voice is heard today. So voting for this motion to re-refer is a vote against rural Minnesota. So if you want to stand up for rural Minnesota, make sure your voice is heard in this chamber today and vote not to re-refer this to the Rules Committee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further discussion, Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. And so, Representative Doubt, I want you to know that we will take this up in the Rules Committee. It won't get um, lost in the shuffle. You have my word on that. And to the members, um, I hope that you'll vote to re-refer re this to Rules because that's where we need to have the discussion. A vote against this is a vote against um, our future together. I want you to vote yes for this. We will be measured by our results and not by the structure of the committees. I ask for your vote. Thank you. Further discussion on Representative Murphy's motion to re-refer um, the proposed amendment to the Rules Committee. Seeing none, the clerk will take the roll. The clerk will close the roll.
There being 71 ayes and 60 nays, the motion prevails. Further discussion to the temporary rules. Seeing no further discussion. Uh, the clerk will take the roll on the joint temporary rules on the motion. The clerk will close the roll. There being 73 ayes and uh, 58 nays, the temporary rules are adopted. Announcement by the speaker. Announcement by the Speaker. The Speaker announces the appointment of Travis D. Reese as Chief Sergeant at Arms. Uh, will Travis D. Reese please come forward to take the oath of office? Please raise, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Minnesota, and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of the office to which you have just been appointed to the best of your ability, so help you God? Thank you. We have a bit more member, uh, business to finish up with members, so please bear with us. Uh, Representative Murphy offers the following resolution. Murphy offers the following resolution and moves its adoption. Be it resolved that the Chief Clerk be instructed to inform the Senate by message that the House is duly organized pursuant to law. I recognize the member from Ramsey County, Representative Murphy E., to explain the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. The following resolution allows the Chief Clerk to notify the Senate that the House is duly organized, and I ask for your vote. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor vote aye. aye. All opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Representative Murphy E. offers the following resolution. Murphy E. offers the following resolution and moves its adoption. Be it resolved that the Speaker appoint a committee of five members of the House to notify the Governor that the House of Representatives is now duly organized pursuant to law and ready to receive any message he may desire to give them. I recognize the member from Ramsey County, Representative Murphy E., to explain the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Members, the following resolution provides for the Speaker to appoint a committee of five members of the House to notify the Governor that the House is duly organized. I ask for your vote. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Announcement by the Speaker. The Speaker announces the appointment of the following members of the committee to notify the Governor that the House is now organized and ready to receive any message he may desire. Bernardi, Allen, Dorholt, Erdahl, and Wills. Uh, the members of the committee can uh, meet in the back of the chamber and proceed to the governor's office. Announcement by the speaker. Okay. All right. Representative Murphy E. offers the following resolution. Murphy E. offers the following resolution and moves its adoption. Resolved that necessary employees, as directed by the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration, be authorized by the House effective today, Tuesday, January 8th, 2013, to better expedite the business of the House. I recognize the member from Ramsey County, Representative Murphy E., to explain the resolution. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Members, this is a resolution that authorizes the employees necessary to better expedite the work of the House beginning today, January 8, 2013, and I ask for your vote. Is there any discussion on this resolution? Uh, since this uh, requires uh, an expenditure of money, we're going to take a roll call, uh, so the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Speaker? Representative Holbert. Thank you. Uh, we don't have copies of these resolutions. I've tried to get them online. Could you give us a little more information about what, what we're approving here? Uh, well, the chief clerk can reread the resolution perhaps first. Be it resolved that necessary employees, as directed by the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration, be authorized by the House effective today, Tuesday, January 8th, 2013, to better expedite the business of the House. Representative Murphy E., would you like to explain the resolution a bit more? Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Holberg. This is a perfunctory resolution that's done at the start of every biennium um, so that we're able to bring uh, the necessary staff on board and they can begin their work and begin being paid. This issue will be brought to the Rules Committee next week for further discussion there. Um, and that's where uh, we will finalize this work. But uh, as we have done at the start of every biennium, this resolution is perfunctory. Representative Holberg. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And then uh, is it fair to say that the exact number of employees and complement will be uh, discussed and approved in the Rules Committee? Is that correct? Representative Murphy. Mr. Speaker and Representative Holberg, that's correct. Is there any further discussion? I'm sorry I didn't see a Representative Holberg. Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will uh, take the roll. The clerk will close the roll. There being 127 ayes and zero nays, the resolution is adopted. Announcement by the speaker. Announcement by the speaker. The speaker announces the appointment of Representative Melissa Hortman as Speaker Pro Temp for the 2013-2014 session. Announcement by the Speaker. Announcement by the Speaker. The Speaker announces the appointment of the following members of the House to Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration. Murphy E. Chair, Benson J. Vice Chair, Albright, Anderson S. Carlson, Doubt, Dean M., Earhart, Hanson, Hillstrom, Hoppy, Hortman, Johnson, S. Kelly, Lencheski, Lesh, Lilly, Loon, Moline, Norton, Pulowski, Pepin, Purcell, Sanders, Torkelson, Ward J. E., Woodard, and Zellers. Uh, members, the appointment of the other standing committee assignments and the new committee meeting schedule will be published in today's journal. Representative Ward J. E. offers the following resolution. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, and I rise to uh, raise a point of order under Rule 6.02 as it relates to committee uh, appointments. And I'd like to speak to that. Okay. Uh, please state your point of order. Go ahead, Representative Doubt. Sure. Under Rule 6.02, um, and, and I'll tell you, Mr. Speaker, I, I'm not trying to delay things or cause trouble here. Uh, you and I had a very nice conversation about the appointment of members to committees. I appreciate your, uh, your input on that. Um, we still have a situation where two of the members that I had originally requested did not receive the appointments that I had requested. Um, I'll call your attention to the second paragraph in Rule 6.02. And I'll read it for the body for those that don't have the, the rules in front of them. 
If the Minority Leader submits to the Speaker Designate at least 15 days before the start of the session, a list of proposed committee and division assignments for the, major uh, excuse me, for the Minority Caucus that complies with the numbers and guidelines provided, the Speaker must make the proposed assignments with the purpose of attaining proportionate representation on the committees and divisions for the Minority Caucus. Um, the rules, Mr. Speaker, here are pretty clear. and. I actually will tell you, you and I had a great conversation about this, and we thought together, I think, that, that it said something differently. Um, and and you, you made two variations from my recommendations. Uh, those were submitted, and I certainly could offer the, the email uh, in which I submitted those to you uh, at least 15 days prior. Um, but I'll tell you, when I found this in the rules, uh, I was actually surprised because I didn't know that it said this. But it is very clear. Um, and. I certainly know that you and I have both made comments um, since our elections to our leadership positions uh, that, we, that we want to work together and in goodwill certainly want to um, make sure that the minority caucus, uh, the voice is heard here and I know that you don't want to do anything to, to stifle that. Uh, I think we both have a desire to get off on the, on the right foot and um, I would uh, certainly think that this might just be a misunderstanding between the two of us and uh, as I said when this came to uh, to my attention, um, I didn't realize it said this, so I'm sure you probably didn't as well. But uh, the speaker, uh, the rules are very clear, and the speaker must make the proposed assignments. So I guess um, my point of order is to ask you to correct those those final two assignments, and and uh, specifically, it's to. Uh, reappoint Representative Dreskowski back on the Environment Finance Committee and Representative Anna Wills uh, back onto the Legacy Committee. So I'd appreciate your ruling on that as well. Thank you. Representative Murphy, for what purpose do you rise? To share my perspective. Uh, go ahead. State your <laughs> advice. There you go. Mr. Speaker and members, thank you. Uh, uh, Representative Doubt, as I look at Rule 6.02, um, I understand the, the predicate in the paragraph that you're talking about, but it gives the speaker the authority uh, uh, to make the appointments uh, as necessary in order to attain proportionate representation on the committees and divisions for the minority caucus. So I want to just uh, share with you that um, while we can continue to discuss this, the speaker does have the authority and the discretion to make those appointments in order to achieve those goals. Representative Dalt, for what purpose do you rise? Further advice, Mr. Speaker. State your advice. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, you know, and I certainly didn't read the first paragraph there, uh, but I certainly can. Uh, what it, or I'll paraphrase maybe uh, in, in, in effort of expediency here. Um, what it says is at least 30 days prior, the Speaker must submit to the Minority Caucus uh, the allocations, um, which he did. It also gives him the opportunity to, um, I'm going to look for the exact language here, uh, and the speaker may require general membership guidelines, which the speaker did not do before the 30 days. Um, the only conversation that I had with you, Mr. Speaker, was that you wanted um, additional female representation on the Environment Committee. Uh, the reason for not making the, the, uh, the appointment of Anna Wills to the Legacy Committee was because you stated that the chair of that committee um, really wanted Representative Pepin on the committee. Um, there's nothing in our rules that says the chair has that uh, authority, and, and certainly I hope that's not something that, um, that affected your decision. Uh, as far as Driskowski on the Environment Finance Committee, we've got six committees with lower uh, female representation as a ratio than this one, so I'm curious as to why uh, if that was the reason, those were the only ones that we spoke about personally, if that was the reason um, uh, why we chose this committee to do that. But, but, but moreover, the rules are very clear, and I'm going to read the, that second paragraph again. Uh, it doesn't say may, it doesn't say shall, what it says is must, okay? And if the things happen at least 15 days before the start of session, which they did, a list of proposed committee and division assignments for the Minority Caucus that complies with the members and the guidelines provided, the Speaker must make the proposed assignments with the purpose of attaining proportionate representation on the committees for the Minority Caucus. So this is a, this is a majority, majority, excuse me, majority, minority uh, representation. Um, and, and everything that we've done so far has complied with this rule, but my hope is, based on all the things that have been said in the media and here in the chamber today, and, and I think you know me well enough to know that my word is good and that I want to work with 
the majority as best we can to do what's best for Minnesota. And I am hoping that in our first act, with new temporary rules in place in this body, my hope is, Mr. Speaker, and I'm going to plead with you to rule what I, what I know you know is right, um, and anybody else who can read the, the rules, and I certainly, you know, I learned the English language from my high school English teacher who is actually here in the chamber, uh, Representative Erickson, and I won't go through the exercise of asking her to yield and define every word, but um, they asked this morning if she was proud of me, and I tell you what, I'm proud to have my English teacher here in the chamber. Um, but nonetheless, I think the, the, the rules and the language here are very clear, and, and I don't care so much about custom and usage. It doesn't matter. Our, our rules have a higher precedence in this body than does custom and usage. The only thing higher than these rules is the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And the, the rules are very clear that the Speaker must take my recommendations. And I ask out of goodwill, Mr. Speaker, if your words that you've spoken since your election, uh, if you want those to mean anything, this is your opportunity uh, to reinstate these, these, uh, these appointments. And these are very minor things. These are two members that, have, that are very passionate about these issues, just as your members are. And they've asked to serve on these committees. I have asked you to have these members serve on these committees. And the rules state that you must make that, that appointment. So um, I ask that you rule uh, my point of order well taken and reinstate these two members to the respective committees. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Hamilton, what purpose do you rise? I advise, Mr. Speaker. Please state your advice. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We do have some precedents. In 2011, I remember uh, when the Democrats were in the minority, um, the minority party submitted their recommendations, and I believe it was Representative Falk that requested the Agriculture Committee, and the majority appointed Representative Winkler. And there was some objection, objection by the minority party, and so Speaker Zellers at the time took those recommendations um, to heart, and then subsequently Representative Winkler was removed from the Agriculture Committee, and Representative Falk was reinstated. So I ask that you find the point of order well taken. Thank you. Representative Winkler, for what purpose do you rise? Uh, Mr. Speaker, advice and to tell the rest of the story, uh, Representative Zellers may remember this, but there were two committees to which I was assigned by the Speaker uh, initially that, I was, that were not submitted by the Minority Leader. One was the uh, Government Operations Committee, and I was switched to Agriculture. The other, I don't remember the other committee, but I was switched to legacy. And I guess Representative Zellers knew what a purgatory it would be to serve under Representative Erdahl. And so <laughs> it was a uh, second committee to which I was assigned, though not at the request of the minority leader. So the precedent is that the speaker actually does have discretion to make those appointments. Uh, Representative Davney, for what purpose do you rise? Mr. Speaker, advice? Please state your advice. Mr. Speaker, uh, there is precedence on this, this question, uh, if memory serves correctly, in the 2002 uh, or 2003, 2004 biennium, then Speaker Sviggum uh, varied from the request of the then DFL minority in the appointments to committee chairs in a number of situations. And again, if memory serves, while the issue was raised about the appointments, uh, he did not change committee assignments at that time, and members who had asked to be placed on specific committees uh, in several instances at, in that biennium were not allowed uh, to serve on those committees by the Speaker. Thank you. Mr. Speaker. Representative Abler, for what purpose do you rise? Advice. Uh, please state your advice. First, let me welcome you to the speaker's role, Mr. Speaker. Um, I have a suggestion, actually, perhaps for the body. I, I do believe that the rule reads as uh, Minority Leader, Minority Leader Doubt uh, read it. I do believe Speaker Swigum and Speaker Zellers and the past ones who have done those acts have been wrong in those actions. And I do believe that uh, in your new effort to be a speaker uh, who will serve as you have hoped to, that uh, you're not bound by wrong precedents of the past. And this has come up. It's the day to celebrate. We have a lot of family here. This could drag on for a while, and I don't want to do that any longer. i got some place to go. Um, so my suggestion, and having not talked to this, about this with anybody, 
is that perhaps uh, just in view of this new word must, which I believe is correct, and I believe the other words after that describe the value of why the must is there, because the minority can decide who which wants to represent itself. And I, with all regrets to Representative Winkler having to serve under the purgatorial uh, Representative Erdahl, I fully agree to that. That would have been just something I wouldn't want to live through. But, Mr. Speaker, there is, we have a lot of big work to do here. And uh, my advice to the to my, to my leader and to you would be to maybe the uh, minority leader doubt could withdraw his point of order. Uh, you and he could sit down between now and Thursday, and if Thursday comes and it's not resolved, we can do this discussion again without the benefit of all these nice people watching us uh, do this on our first day. That's my advice, Mr. Speaker, to you and to my leader. Having heard uh, the advice of Representative, Representative Doubt. For what purpose do you rise? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, in, in light of those comments, I'm, I'm very happy to do that. And you have been very good to work with thus far. Uh, we obviously have had this disagreement on these last two committee assignments. And, and um, if, if I have your commitment that you're willing to sit down and, and really talk about this, uh, I would be happy to withdraw my, my, my uh, point of order. <laughs> Representative Murphy. <laughs> Mr. Speaker and members, I am certain that we would be happy to talk about that with you if you'd be willing to withdraw your motion. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and, and Representative Murphy. And I, I'm going to do this uh, to show my goodwill and, and my faith to work together. And I'm going to explain to the body this is really a minor thing. We're talking about two members that are very passionate about the issues that they care about that want to serve on these committees. One of them has a long history of serving on that committee, um, and there's really no reason not to appoint these members. Um, and I'll tell you, this is, this is something that I think the rules are very clear on. And, and understand from our perspective, from in the majority, we don't want, you know, this feels a bit like a stick in the eye to not, not have that respected. And, and I don't want to start out uh, our time together like that, and, and I'm going to withdraw the point of order, um, but I want you to understand that's a, that's a point of good faith on my part, and, and I want you to understand this is a pretty minor thing uh, to start off on the wrong foot. So I hope that we really can have a good conversation about this, and I can assure you that we'll be revisiting this on Thursday uh, if we don't in the meantime. So I thank you for your, uh, for your patience, and I'll withdraw the uh, point of order. Representative Doubt uh, withdraws his point of order. Ward J.E. offers the following resolution and moves its adoption. Resolved that the selection of permanent desks shall be as directed by the Speaker as follows. I recognize the member from Crow Wing County, Representative Ward J.E., to explain the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, just to let you know, Representative Holberg and myself worked on the floor seating arrangements uh, within our respective caucuses. And we hope that you all enjoy and uh, are agreeable with your floor seat assignments. Those that were not uh, were moved to the Senate chamber. So um, <laughs> we just ask for your support for this resolution. Is there any discussion to the resolution? Seeing none, all in favor of the resolution say aye. aye. All opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. <laughs> Messages from the Senate. Message from the Senate, Mr. Speaker. This is to notify you that the Senate is now duly organized pursuant to Minnesota Constitution and Minnesota statutes. Signed, Joanne M. Zoff, Secretary of the Senate. Message from the Senate. I hereby announce the adoption of the Senate of the following Senate concurrent resolution herewith transmitted. Senate concurrent resolution number one, a Senate concurrent resolution relating to the adoption of temporary joint rules. Introduction of Senate Concurrent Resolution Number One, a Senate Concurrent Resolution relating to adoption of temporary joint rules, be it resolved by the Senate of the State of Minnesota, the House of Representatives concurring, the temporary joint rules of the Senate and the House of Representatives for the 87th session are adopted as the temporary joint rules for the 88th session to be effective until adoption of permanent rules by the Senate and the House of Representatives. Uh, Murphy, oh, sorry, go ahead. Murphy E. moves that the rules be so far suspended that Senate concurrent resolution be now considered and placed upon its adoption. I call the member from Ramsey County, Representative Murphy. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I do move suspension of the rules in order to uh, deal with Senate concurrent resolution number one. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker uh, and members. I would support this motion and encourage you to vote in favor. Yep. Any further discussion to the motion to suspend the rules? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, no. The uh, motion is adopted. Murphy moves that the Senate concurrent resolution number one be now adopted. Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I move that Senate concurrent resolution number one now be adopted. This is the joint temporary rules of the House and Senate. I ask for your vote. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Again, I'd speak in favor of this uh, motion and encourage member support. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the resolution say aye. aye. All opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. I call on Representative Bernardi from the committee uh, to notify the governor to give her report. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of our committee, I report that we have sent the message to the governor that the Minnesota House of Representatives is now organized. Thank you. Are there any announcements? Okay. Uh, Representative Loeffler. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members, and welcome all um, returning faces as well as new ones. And we have a wonderful opportunity tomorrow uh, to get to know each other better and to learn with and uh, each other from both state and national experts on the issues that we're going to confront during this term. And as we prepare to govern well together, I would really like to encourage you all to take tomorrow and join me and many other members at the uh, Humphrey Institute, and you'll be getting again another reminder email today about the information about the buses and how you can drive there yourself directly you will be done in time to participate in other evening activities so I encourage you it's not too late to decide to participate and invite you all to join us tomorrow at the Humphrey Institute thank you announcements uh, representative uh, we have a I guess former, barely former representative in the body with us today, Representative Steve Gottwald, is in the back of the chamber. Let's welcome him. And thank you for your service. Further announcements? Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. We've worked awfully hard today, and I think that means we should have a reception, and there will be one in the retiring room as soon as we're finished. I also want to let you know, especially for your guests, that there are tours that have been arranged of our lovely capital today, and if you would like to participate in those tours, you just need to go down to the desk in the corner on the first floor of uh, the state capitol, and you can get a tour of our lovely capital. Thank you. Further announcements? Uh, Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I move that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 12 noon, Thursday, January 10th, 2013. Representative Murphy E. moves that when the House adjourns today, it adjourn until 12 noon, Thursday, January 10th, 2013. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say nay. The motion prevails. Representative Murphy E. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I move that the House do now adjourn. Representative Murphy E. moves that the House do now adjourn. All those in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, nay. The motion prevails. The House stands adjourned until 12 noon, Thursday, January 10th, 2013.